So Wayfinders with four abilities each and very distinct visuals. Wayfinders that you will have to farm and then unlock or build ones that you can switch to whenever you want, right? It sounds very familiar. Imagine Warframe in a Darksiders style, very magical universe, because that's the vibe I'm getting from Wayfinder. Now, when you jump into an MMO, what is your go-to class or your go-to playstyle? Because Wayfinder's beta is imminent, so I thought now would be a good idea to give you an overview of each of the five Wayfinders or heroes and their signature weapons that will be available to begin with. With a sixth hero, a Wayfinder unknown, but by the silhouette, she looks female and has some kind of grenades or maybe vials on her hips. So if you don't know what Wayfinder is, then check out my previous video, which I've linked in the description of this video. It is a free to play upcoming MMO from Airship Syndicate and Digital Extremes and its heroes sound very much like Warframes just in a different setting. But first let's take a look at the five heroes that you're going to be able to play. First up is Wingrave, the Templar in his spell forged armor. A paladin I guess but one with a dark past so healing, shields, support abilities and defensive in nature. Your typical hero in an MMO. Wingrave has a sword and shield called Bastion which comes with a shield bash ability that will Will break enemies guards but remember all heroes can use any weapons that they want so he isn't tied to a sword and a shield you could use a gun or a rifle with him if you wanted to now his four abilities are as follows righteous strike will hit enemies causing an explosion of healing orbs to drop healing him and nearby allies so basically plenty of healing candy on the ground for you and your allies to pick up and stay alive his second ability is called radiant pulse Wingrave will summon a giant divine shield in front of him that blocks projectiles and boosts the defenses of allies standing behind it. So Reinhardt from Overwatch, kind of. His third ability is called Judgment and it's where Wingrave will mark enemies and anyone hitting those enemies will be healed. So again, another support ability. Now, Wingrave's ultimate ability is called the Vine Aegis, and it's basically a large protective dome spawning over Wingrave, and anyone inside it will be immune to taking damage, but also will be healed over time as well. So it's a really good kind of oh shit ability. Now, Wingrave is very health regen defensive based, not so much a tank as I thought he was going to be by the images of him with a sword and shield, but it does sound like he would be a pretty solid sounding support class for you to run with in your squad. Like I said, he can use any weapon in game that he wants to. So huge two hand or daggers, rifle or sword and shield. You get to play with your heroes or your wayfinders, however the hell you want to. Next up or the next hero up is Silo, the smuggler, the tactician. Also the guy with the gun and grenades, but one that has a fragmented memory of his past. He's kind of forgotten stuff that's going to unravel the more you play him. This might be my go to hero to start start off with. He is a ranged hero with some support abilities as well. His weapon is called Longshot and it is a rifle that creates weak spots on targets at range which will increase the damage that they take once you shoot the weak spots. Now Silo's first ability is called Firebomb which surprise surprise he throws a firebomb that ignites enemies and deals damage over time. His second ability is called Oil Bomb, and this leaves a pool of oil on the ground slowing enemies but also chains with Firebomb to increase Firebomb's damage. His third ability is called Radiant Clone and this is where Silo will drop a holographic clone of himself that enemies will then be forced to attack. So very heavy rock and stone kind of vibes with this one like the Deep Rock Galactic Grenade that does the exact same thing. Now his ultimate ability is called Ground Zero. Silo will throw an egg which will electrocute and stun enemies while also dealing damage to them over time. So by the sounds of his abilities, he's kind of an engineer class, if you will, which I really dig. And it's definitely the type of hero that I look to play in games like this, that or an out and out tank. Now, our next hero is called Nis. She is a dark Eldrin assassin hero, kind of like a dark elf, almost a pure offensive hero or wayfinder. Her weapon is a set of daggers called Knight's Edge, and it will summon magical daggers that float around its user and attack any enemy that gets within range. Kind of like Nullstar with Nova in Warframe, the exact same kind of idea. Now her first ability is called Shadow Step. Nis will dash in a line dealing damage 
but after a short delay, a spectral clone will dash in the same direction as you were, starting off from your initial location and ending where you currently are, while the spectral clone will also deal damage. Now, her second ability is called Umbral Aura. Nis will empower herself with Umbral Magic, making her next three dodges deal shadow damage to any nearby enemy. Her third ability is called Vengeful Shade. Nis will become immune to attacks and damage enemies in front of her. Her ultimate is called Gloom Shield, and for the next few seconds, her first ability, Shadow Step, will cost no resources whatsoever, so you can basically spam it. So she sounds like she might be a little bit of a glass cannon, but deals a lot of damage. She is the assassin. Now, the next Wayfinder up is Senja, or basically the Death by Snoo Snoo class, the greatest gladiator in the Imperial arena. Senja looks like the most balanced character that there is for us to pick from. She's more of a tank than Wingrave was from the sounds of her abilities. Now, her weapon is called Colossus, and it is a huge two-handed sword. Its ability is called Gladiator Slice, and it's effectively a quick melee attack which will buff her next ability. Using Gladiator Slice again will perform an Empowered Slice, dealing twice the damage, but I kind of like the sound of just being able to buff an ability by using it once. Imagine using it with an offensive hero, so putting this sword on, say, Nis and using it that way, and buffing one of her ability attacks. But anyway, it sounds like Senja's abilities are used off a resource called Favor, but her first ability is called Gladiator Pummel, where she will punch an enemy, then flex to gain Favor, which increases the damage of follow-up punch but also buffs your next weapon attack. Her second ability is called Gain Favor, and holding this ability down will cause Senja to fill up her favor meter, and releasing the ability will taunt nearby enemies while also buffing your allies. So she has a taunt ability, so she's instantly a tank, right? Her third ability is called Lightning Grasp, and it is a pull ability, so she uses lightning to pull all movable enemies towards her in a large radius. Instantly makes me think some enemies won't won't be movable because of the warding of this ability, so I'm guessing bosses and maybe elites and enemies like that. Her ultimate is called Grand Finale. Senja will charge up lightning and then smash into enemies dealing massive damage and fully charging her favor at the same time. So she's effectively a hero or wayfinder that can taunt enemies, can pull large groups of enemies towards her, which would allow you to take enemies away from some of the weaker allies in your squad and allow them to deal damage while the other ones were focusing on you. So for me, Senja is instantly the tank character that I would put the sword and shield on, but maybe you'd be different. Which leaves us with the final hero, Kairos. Kairos is the War Mage, another very offensive-minded Wayfinder, one that can scatter enemies with raw energy. His weapon is called the Epitaph, a huge two-handed scythe, one that feeds on the essence of its enemies, but its ability is a 360-degree attack that steals enemies' ability power and increases your Wayfinder's ability power per enemy hit. So Kairos's first ability is called Savage Rake. Kairos will rake the ground with violent energy, dealing damage to enemies in front of Kairos, but arcane fragments can be consumed to cast the ability at no extra cost, which I'll get into in a second. His second ability is called Siphon Radiant. This is where Kairos will release a wave of energy that damages enemies and absorbs arcane power, but also reduces your cooldowns and grants him an arcane fragment, which can be used on his first ability to make it cost no resource. His third ability is called Arcane Focus. This is where Kairos will mark enemies, and as you hit these enemies, the mark builds in power until it eventually explodes, dealing a lot of damage. His ultimate ability is called Shockwave, and this is basically a huge purple hand coming out of a sky vortex and slamming into enemies, dealing massive area damage. Now, this ability gives me serious Darksiders 2 vibes, because I'm pretty sure Death had an ability very similar to this, where the hand kind of came out of a portal like this, so huge fucking memories from this one, so I loved it. Now, the sixth class, we don't know much about yet. Like I said, it is a silhouette on the website. You only get to see that it does look female. It has got some kind of vials or grenades on the hips, but that's the five heroes that you'll be able to change to on the fly in a similar way to how you change your Warframes in Warframe. If you don't like using one, then you can instantly just switch to the next. The game will be free to play, cross-play, PC, PlayStation, and the website does say Xbox, so I'm assuming Xbox may be on full launch with early access taking priority on PlayStation and PC. But let me know what you think of the five heroes. Have a great day, and as always, thanks for watching.